Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and I'm excited to start with the deck text for Zendikar Rising, the new set that's coming out next week on September 17th. As always, I'll be participating in the early streamer event, which is taking place on the 16th, so do stop by on Twitch. We'll be playing uh, this deck as well as a bunch of other decks that I'm brewing. Uh, it's a really fun time. We get to play against other content creators. Um, the format is best of one, so we will be building this deck for best of one right now. Uh, if you do have any suggestions for this deck or any decks in particular that you'd like to see for the event, do let me know in the YouTube comments below. All these decks, as always, are intended to be a starting point, stuff we need to test. So definitively, I'm not saying this is tier one in any case, but it's really an opportunity to get started and try things out. So the first deck that we'll be featuring is the one I'm most excited about. It's really the playstyle I like, which is uh, Demir Rose. Rogues? Rouge? Uh, Demir is a blue-black, and it's built kind of like a tempo-style deck, uh, smaller creatures, and it's got kind of like a mill something. So let's jump into it. Also, let me know what you think of this kind of format change for the deck text if you like it more this way, and I can continue in this format. So, jumping into it. Uh, Creature-wise, uh, so we have Zareth San Trickster. This is a 5-mana 4-4. Four, four. Uh, we're playing three of them. Uh, so it's Flash, and then it has an ability very similar to Ninjutsu, for, which is an older uh, ability. So for four mana, you could return an unblocked attacking rogue you control to its owner's hand, and you could put Zareth onto the battlefield from your hand, tapped and attacking. Whenever it deals combat damage to player, you put target permanent card uh, from their graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Notably, it says permanent. So you can do lands, planeswalkers, enchantments, artifacts, creatures, anything like that. So this is really like an awesome card. I wish we could play it in commander properly, uh, but it's from hand, not from command zone. So can't take advantage of it that way. Um, so we're playing three because it is legendary and the deck's kind of built around it. So you'll notice we're playing a lot of creatures with flying or some form of evasion to have that unblocked clause come through. Up next, we have Soaring Thoughtseed. Thief. Uh, blue black, two mana, one three, flash flying. Uh, as long as opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, rogues you control get plus one zero. So you'll notice a theme with a lot of these rogue effects, eight or more cards uh, in the graveyard. And then whenever one or more rogues you control attacks, each opponent mills two cards. So this is a way to fill the graveyard, get stuff for Xerath, as well as enable its lord effect. Uh, next we have Nighthawk Scavenger, which is the buffed up Nighthawk Vampire. Apologize on this one, the font's a little low quality. Some of the newer cards don't have full HD uh, images available yet. Um, so Flying Death Touch Lifelink, a whole bunch of words. Uh, Nighthawk Scavenger's power is equal to one plus the number of card types amongst uh, cards in your opponent's graveyard. Again, we have a mill theme. We're putting stuff in the opponent's graveyard. So this is a great way to kind of get a big attacker come through. Again, it's a rogue and it has a lot of evasion to it. Uh, we're also playing four uh, Merfolk Wind Robbers. It's a one mana flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player mills a card. And then you can sacrifice it to draw a card. And you can only activate this ability if your opponent has eight or more cards. So it's a way late game to cycle and get some effects like that as well. Also, it's a cheap card that you can play out early and then use Xerath and then play it again. Uh, moving to the rest of the creatures in the deck, some familiar, to familiar faces uh, that do have the rogue subtype. Uh, Brazen Borrower, uh, obviously heavily played. Uh, it has the adventure car casting ability to two mana bounce something, or you get a three mana, three one flash flyer. Uh, you also have Rankle, Master of Pranks. Uh, this is another way to have a, a rogue with haste, and then it has a whole bunch of abilities that are useful for our deck. Uh, we have cheap things we can sacrifice if need be to get that advantage there. And then we have Thieves Guild Enforcer. Um, this is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one that gets bigger and becomes a 3-2 if your opponent has 8 or more cards in the graveyard. It also gains death touch. And then whenever it or another rogue enters the battlefield, your opponent mills 2. So that kind of rounds up the creatures. There are a couple more merfolks, 1-mana, uh, 2-mana ones uh, that do have flying. We can play around with that, but what I wanted to do was have a little bit more disruption with the deck as well. Most of our creatures themselves are pretty underpowered, so we want ways to kill things and kind of tempo your opponent. So moving into the spells, uh, the one that I'm most curious about, and I've had not the greatest results in the past, but I think if this deck can enable it, I don't know what will, that's Drown in the Lock. So uh, blue-black, basically counter or kill something 
with CMC equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyard. Um, so this here was really around milling, and then we can try to kill stuff like that. Uh, or counter as well. So it's flexibility, counter, and mill. So doing something like this compared to like Heartless Act is worse in the early game, but has much more utility late game because it gives us the option to counter or kill. Um, and it doesn't restrict us to anything with counters. There's a whole counter sub-theme sub in Zendikar, which could have an effect in terms of how good Heartless Act actually is. Uh, we are playing three Eliminates just to kill a lot of the earlier creatures, Uros, stuff like that. Four Lofty Denials. Uh, pretty much, as you saw, most of our creatures do have flying. Um, so this basically becomes a two-mana opponent counter unless your opponent pays four. Uh, and then finally, two Mind Carvers. This is an equipment. Um, so similar to Ember Cleave that auto-equips, this is a one-mana auto-equipped. Uh, it get Normally your creatures get plus one-oh, but if they have eight cards in their graveyard, they get plus three-one instead. So this kind of supersizes any of our flyers to give them a lot more power in the air. Uh, finally, moving on to the lands. Um, so playing two black castles, just as card advantage, you're going to be grinding them out with smaller things, so you want to refill your hand. We have the new pathway lands. So the pathway lands are give you the option. They're a dual land. So you, in from your hand, you either get to choose to have them out as an island or as a swamp. Once they're in play, they're only that color. So this is something I want to try out, see how good they are. Um, generally speaking, if I'm playing tap duels, I prefer the trinomes over the temples, um, in part because they do have the basic land type, so your castles come into play untapped. Um, and then late game, I'd rather draw a card than scry. Uh, and then finally, six islands, seven swamps. Um, one card I was considering playing in lieu of one of our lands is uh, the Mythic uh, Aegeum Crypt, I think it's called. The Mythic Flip Land, like uh, Bolt Land. Uh, that one there is gives you the option of a swamp for three life untapped, or late game you can pay three plus X and then return creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield. So that's something we want to try out as well uh, to see with that there. Um, there is also the man land, the four mana colorless, it becomes an elemental with counters on it. That's something else we can try out as well. But with the deck itself, going back, like really we have options here. We can be more counter based, we can be more flash based. Uh, more removal, uh, more creatures. Uh, so there is flexibility as we kind of figure out what we need to combat with that. But really the engine is kind of mill your opponent, go from there. Uh, the biggest hurdle is obviously we are going to be milling our opponent's Uros and they will be fueling them as well for the escape. So it might be something that we want cling to dust in the deck, uh, one mana exile target permanent. We can do scrabbling claws. Uh, there's options to attack Uro if it is heavily prevalent as well. So that pretty much wraps up the deck tech. Um, do let me know what you want to see uh, as the next decks. I have a handful already put together. I have Blue White Mill. I have Four Color Omnath. I have Bant Landfall. Uh, is it kind of tempo? Uh, green Black Counters. Um, so I do have a few that I'll be demoing, but do let me know if there's anything specific. If you do have any cool ideas of decks that you'd like to see um, on the early streamer event as well, uh, do drop me the link if you're brewing anything, and time permitting, we can play those as well. Um, otherwise, like I mentioned, uh, Wednesday the 16th, I'll be on from about 1 p.m. Eastern, usually go to about 9, 10 p.m. at night. Um, so if you do want to stop by, watch some games, otherwise everything will be archived and put onto my YouTube channel shortly thereafter. Appreciate you stopping by. Have a great one and stay safe out there.